This music inspires me, first of all, because it's connected to the, the story of a people. The folk songs are connected to, of course, folklore. And folklore is a living archive. It's a living museum. And I've always been interested in history and telling stories. This is what I do with song and an opera or in any character that I sing. The reason I wanted these Yiddish folk songs to be performed is I wanted to, to bring that to light again. I wanted the world to be acquainted with this culture and with this, this beautiful, passionate music. <laughs> So Yiddish folk songs became a part of my passion on several levels because they're not only connected to a specific culture, but they're universal. They speak of all the things that our human condition addresses. This was a body of vocal literature that just has to be heard. You have a lot of folk songs from many cultures that have become world renowned, you know, people know them because of the beautiful classical arrangements by the great composers like Johannes Brahms and Dvorak, Benjamin Britten, Aaron Copland. But this didn't happen with the Yiddish folk songs. There was one person, Robert de Cormier, who did arrange these folk songs for a classical singer. Of course, it's been an enormous project to do this because there are 42 songs and we had to locate Robert de Cormier and it was a little tricky, but we were, because of the wonder of the internet, we were able to find him and he was semi-retired living in Vermont. And then we said, well, where are the scores? You know, how can we get a hold of this? He says, they've been in my closet for 50 years. <laughs> So we arranged for him to come to New York and we met at a restaurant. He had the scores under his arm and we had a wonderful meal together and spoke about it. He handed them over and so started this Yiddish folk song project. Without my husband, John Yaffe, this project would have never happened. He's an accomplished conductor, he is an accomplished pianist and coach, and he also fell in love with these songs and felt that this was a project that had to be done. Besides that, he is also involved in the publishing of these songs and doing all the high-end work for the musical notation of them. Even though I'm a classical singer and I've sung opera, concerts, oratorio, recitals, folk songs have a little bit of a different approach in the way that I present them. And I like to always give them a bit of a spiel 
which is the explanation of the song before I sing it. For instance, Tumbala Laika, it's one of the most popular Yiddish folk songs of all, and it's about a young man who's in love with two girls. He can't decide which one, so he poses a riddle to both of them, and the one who answers the riddle, he will marry. Yiddish is one of the most descriptive, colorful languages you could ever encounter. It reflects the irony of the Jewish culture. The song Freilach means joyful. Or as Bobby McFerrin once said in his music video, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> There's the smile with the tear. There's the suffering, but not giving up, no matter what. The Yiddish folk song culture is not going to survive by the popular klezmer music or the work that, say, the New York-based Folksbina does for Yiddish theater. This is a different form of entertainment. What I hope for this project is that these songs will be performed by thousands of singers. Because once they're heard, once they're published, highly trained classical singers will want to perform them. It's really how they're going to survive. <laughs>